Good morning. And as a co-chair of the event, a warm welcome to you all. Once upon a time, wow, it sounds like a Cinderella story. But truly, it's my personal experience that I have had while I was in Canada and working for a multinational company. One fine morning, my boss said, oh, look, it's time to roll up the sleeves and lead this project. One large operator in the Middle East region have contacted our top management. And they explained an unnatural situation, extraordinary situation, and they solicited our solution. As we dealt more into the problem, we realized that this large operator has distributed as a bundled solutions a wide number of handsets to the consumers. And these phones should have had acoustic coupling isolation of 45 dB between the microphone and the speaker, but unfortunately it have had only 30 dB. And therefore it created an echo on the mobile which was being perceived on the other side be it on the land or the mobile. Now truly, it is a handset problem. But question was, could you solve in the base station? Because that's what we were selling. So yes, it's an unexplored area, but we promised and we vowed to turn this challenge into an opportunity. 30 days time, clock started ticking, the hourglass goes upside down, but we vowed to solve this problem. And in a stress-free manner, what it meant is, if you need it after a day's work, a rest, let it be so. The mathematician is solving the signal processing equation. And we all thronged together to break the problems into sub-problems and found out alternatives. Within 30 days, we got from research problem to developing the solutions, optimizing on a platform, field testing, and delivering. The team got an accolade and an award, and the company got a fine business deal. Today, I think, you know, it resonates with me that my development experience, many of you here might be having the similar thing. Tizen, it's an uncharted territory. Questions may be common. What are the products that are using Tizen platform? How many developers are there? What apps are being available and being used? Do I get technical support when uh, I need them? Forums like TDS is a fertile ground to seek clarifications for such questions from Tizen experts and also to pledge to make Tizen a winning platform. When we were looking last year, the mobile landscape, as Dr. Kwok said, we found out that two-thirds of the populations are still in the feature phones. So the question was, with Tizen coming, could we utilize this and give these people a first-time smartphone experience? So we conceptualized our product in an affordable price, as he said, and that's Z1. And if you didn't know, in less than six months, we have been able to sell one million. Now, by other standards, it may look like, great. Thanks for the appreciation. And by other standards, it may look like a moderate achievement, but given that we are at the starting stage of ecosystem, we consider to be a significant step forward in this journey. So what made us, our Z1, so successful? Three key features. First, battery life. We all try to have more and more power. The platform components are well optimized to have long-lasting battery life. 1,500 milliampere hour battery, it can give you 10 hours of uninterrupted internet usage time or seven hours of video playback time. On top of that, like any other Samsung phone, we also have ultra power saving mode. If you reach to 10% of your battery, you can still get a lot of standby time and still have your basic functions running, calls, SMS. 
if you are in that situation. So that's the first key point. The second, in the era of selfie and capture me kind of uh, situations, good camera is always good, right? What we did is a fast app launch, less than one second. And this superior camera lens, it brings brighter photos in very low light condition. Not only that, in this price range, focal length of 2.4 also helps you to give, get a bit more wider angle picture. So that is the second success story. And the third one, obviously, uh, it's look and feel. Simple, intuitive UX for Indian market. After detailed market study, we found out that. And consumers say this phone is in this particular price range. It is quite elegantly and stylishly designed one. What we also did, the frequently used apps, they are readily positioned and customizable in the home screen itself. As we continue our journey, we could see that between January to July, we have grown these apps in the Tizen 84%. So we look for quantity, but we also carefully curate for meaningful applications. Growth are happening in all categories, and we see enthusiasm, so we went further to study a little bit more. And we saw two interesting facts. One was a little bit shocking to me. Uh, the mobile app developers are just around 1% of global developers. I was expecting a bit more, and I was thinking it could be a good quiz question. But nonetheless, the second point, which is interesting from our standpoint, is that the Tizen store, 27% of the contributors are from India. So with this picture, we are building a solid Tizen store. And as we progress on that journey, you could see that the local and the global top brands, right? You can see them. I'm not reading, but Facebook, Book My Show, Jabong, many others, Go Ibibo, all of them are part of this journey. If you are thinking, what are the apps that are more popular? Let me tell you the top three categories are games, entertainment, and utility. Games, entertainment, and utility. Now, it might mean you want to strengthen this, or it might mean that you have other thoughts and you want to build on those and make it to the top three. That's your call. But if you are thinking, we are talking about India and Bangalore, that all these store apps, is it only used in uh, this local region? It is not. It's accessible to 182 countries in the May count that I saw. So, it's quite widely deployed. And at the same time, let me remind you of one announcement we made uh, when we launched Z1 in 14th of January, that if you build apps, 100% of the revenues for one year is yours completely. There is nothing excess, obviously, the government taxes or credit card charges or the operators minus them. All of these revenue are yours. Uh, that's what we announced for a year. At this point, let me talk about two important SDKs because our Z1 was built on 2.3, and today we are talking between then and now what has changed. 2.3.1 and 2.4 beta, these two Tizen SDKs are ready. Let me explain you the key features of these two SDKs. 2.3.1, it's for the wearables. 2.3 had web apps. You could build only web apps, but with 2.3.1, you can also build the native apps. The applications are going to be lightweight, optimized for power and memory. The next interesting thing is the circular display. We all like something traditional and circular watch are elegant, traditional, something familiar. So we thought, why not utilize this? And SDK can also translate. If you have already built something for the rectangular apps, it can also translate to circular apps and vice versa. So this is one interesting key feature that we have. 
And as we do that, we have tried to utilize a rotating bezel, an advanced input, at the level of app, list, page navigation, horizontal, vertical, zoom in, zoom out, many of the features you could do. And if you didn't get me what I'm saying, let me go to the next slide. Probably it will give you some feature of it. You could also change the date and month year. So this is an exciting feature that is there, and it's a new way to interact with the circular UI. So that's about 2.3.1. Let me now come to 2.4 beta version that we are talking today. It's an improved mobile connectivity uh, with other devices, wearables and TVs, new features, new possibilities with this particular SDK. Three important things, the UX and graphics, you have the location and context awareness and the cloud. Let me take one slide each for these three points. Rich UI. Through this, you can have core control and patterns. Rich set of UI is included to do navigating elements. You have user input components and assisting in the views. You can see a floating action button. You can Add your contacts, quick access to favorite features. That's what it's meant for. So the whole goal is how developers can develop a fast applications. We build the framework in a solid fashion so that you could develop fast. And also, the apps, if you look around, you can see they are consistent looking apps. So that is our goal through this rich UI code control and patterns. The second one is called DALI, Dynamic Animation Library, Embedded System Oriented 3D Engine. You may not know, but in our Galaxy S6 product as a flagship kind of experience that we have, the same one, we are trying to bring it onto the Tizen. It's an open source, and the whole goal is why not bring that flagship experience to this Tizen platform. And while doing it, I keep three things in mind, what we call HLL metric. HLL metric is high performance, low power, and low memory. High performance, low power, low memory. That's what DALI is all about. And we are further working on to build a development tool so that even people can import 3D model. They can do physics simulations very quickly. And these imported models could have lighting and material textures. So this DALI GUI builder will allow rapid development of application UIs and animations. So it's going to be available uh, after a while. Next key point is the context trigger. The, this particular feature uses the context data like users' activities, device status, environment information, and location. Location is very important, like the kids coming uh, from the school, and you could get that answer. The whole idea is the way we are cognizant about our surroundings. Can this device be knowing who, when, where, and give some of these questions answered through this? That is about context trigger. And one other interesting feature is called Cloud Box. Now, with information, with all kinds of pictures, however uh, memory we provide in the phones, it's not sufficient. You always need something more. And you attach extra devices. So whether you like to go to the cloud to store something in Dropbox and Amazon, or you'd prefer your own home device, it's up to you. Public or private, we treat here as a separate file system. All the interface to the cloud is treated as one file system access. By doing this, not only you are storing, but connecting to multitudes of cloud-based services. Today, 
they may be available, but as you go there, any new services that could be built on cloud could be accessed through the cloud box. And we already have the gallery, uh, our apps, using this cloud box. Now, these are the two different SDKs I wanted to highlight. In the next phase of talk, I just wanted to highlight how we are helping in the games. Why games? Because when you look into the top 10, five of them appearing to be games. And even top 50 rank, 27 of them are games. So Tizen users are looking like intersect well with the games. And this could be one interesting area for developers. To help that, we have tied up two popular game engines. One is Cocos 2D, and that's already there. And you will also have a special sessions from Unity. This is on 3D Engine, and what it does in this building, these two engines, and you can instantly deploy on Tizen. So you use this SDK of Unity, and your application could be instantly deployed on the Tizen. At the same time, as you are utilizing it, you can have an in-app purchase model offered by these gaming engines. And you have a special session uh, to learn more about this. To talk a little bit, two slides on the Tizen TV. Launched worldwide, commercialized the smart TV. And here in the series five to nine this year, 17 models have been launched in 2015 based on Tizen. And quite a good number of them are premium. So do not have an idea that Tizen platform is only for low-end kind of devices. It tries to take care of constrained devices of sensors and smaller units to going to the uh, TV level of applications. So we have a Tizen TV SDK. The key three important features are, first of all, you build the web apps. You can use JS, CSS, HTML5, the web apps uh, is meant for the convergence applications or otherwise. But since it could be slower, there is this CAF that helps you to get hardware accelerations. It ties to the development processors and makes it faster. And the third thing, utilizing the multi-threading capabilities, we have this multi-screen uh, SDK that's part of this Tizen TV. So you could see a TV program in one screen, but you can also have a YouTube on the other screen. So where do we go from here? We are geared up for Tizen, the waste of everything. That's what we are trying to build. But how do you contribute? So specifically, we have two different communities that we are trying to build. One, the first, is the developer community. It's a three-pronged approach in the developer community. Education. We have these forums like this. The dev labs are happening regularly. In India, we have done about five here in Bangalore, Coimbatore, Mumbai, and many more are planned. Every three to four weeks, we are holding dev labs. That's the first one, education. And tomorrow also, as we said, we have a session for that. The second part, remote test lab. Because you could build an application which require many mobile devices. Or maybe it's a convergence application whereby you need the TV and the wearables and the mobile. And you may not have always access. So you could get to this remote test lab and access not simulations, emulations. It's the true devices effect that you could get. And the third part of it is resources, the tutorials, the best practices, Q&A forums. It's a soft approach. And I must say that Samsung Digital Academy has a program. We have tied up with uh, 78 MSMEs over time, but 10 already we have trained the trainer program we conducted last week. And we will take it forward uh, through that. So anybody interested, developer.tizen.org is the place to go. And the second one, which is different, this complements the developer forum. Listen to the voice of consumer. Consumers are saying something, whispering, and you have all the enthusiasts 
developers, accessory vendors, what do they like? What do they don't like? What's their pain point? How do you convert those challenges into opportunities which I talked about in the beginning? That is what it's about, and you could adjust your development strategy by listening to them. This is a forum where we are talking. You have seen the slide in the beginning. There is a special booth, and we will take it forward to start with in India and then going uh, in full swing. So, geared up for Tizen, the waste of everything that we wanted to talk about. It is about the heterogeneous devices all getting connected. And at this point, I had a few more slides which, kept gonna, which we could have covered, but uh, I'm very privileged and we all are very happy to have EVP Hyogen Lee, who is here. So I would like to invite him to take through these slides how Tizen could be utilized in the IoT context. He's an executive vice president at Samsung Electronics, head of software platform team in the software R&D center, leading the development of the Tizen open source platform for smart devices, smartphones, watches, tablets, IVI, name it, and he has been in that uh, anchoring point. So at this point, I'd like to invite EVP Lee. Thank you from my side. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be here in Bengaluru uh, and to talk about the Internet of Things and what it means to developers like you. Um, okay, to start, I'd like to talk about uh, three things that you should be thinking about. I can't start without uh, talking about the significant global challenges that our generation is facing today. The first one is shifting demographics. In developing countries, we have fast-growing young populations, while the more developed economies are faced with declining birth rate and stagnant growth. In India, we are looking at how to feed, educate, and create jobs for a uh, growing population. But in Korea, by 2050, there will be more people turning 90 years old each year than those who are being born. In Korea and the West, aging populations mean increasing health care and social issues because there are fewer people to take care of their seniors. Second challenge is urbanization. According to the UN, we have 7 billion people today, going to 9 billion by 2050. Half the populations are urban dwellers today, and two out of three people will be uh, in urban areas. This is a huge issue today in India with crowd cities like Mumbai, Delhi, and Kolkata. But it is also changing the way people live all across the globe. The third one is climate change. As we all know, we are getting more and more superstorms, poor air quality, and increasing temperature also issues with water quality and availability. We can change many of these things, but we can use technology to help address the impact of these challenges by making life safer, healthier, and more comfortable. The good news is that we have experienced uh, technical evolution, which has made technology uh, cheaper, more available, more accessible. Moore's law of increasing performance and declining cost for chips has made it possible to uh, put 
the intelligence of a 1970s supercomputer into a smartphone today. The addition of low-cost sensors and small radios and the connectivity through internet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, has now made it possible to make a best network of things which can talk to each other and enable intelligent applications and services. We expect uh, 100 billion devices to be connected to this Internet of Things by 2020. To date, India and other developing countries are already using the technology, the benefits of the technology. Millions of people without access to brick and mortar bank use are now using uh, cell phones for personal banking. India, India's a uh, huge consumer of online education. Imagine uh, what would happen if online learning could be delivered using a cell phone with projectors using renewable energy resources. Telemedicine can also uh, connect people in remote villages to medical experts. New, new devices like Sri Netra, a portable pre-screening device uh, developed, developed in Bengaluru here, are making it cost-effective to address preventable blindness for millions of people in India. Also, the Swastaya Slate uh, is an affordable health device with 33 sensors for blood pressure, blood sugar, heart rate, uh, blood hemoglobin, urine protein, etc., etc., etc. Using this kind of affordable device, health workers are, uh, health workers are providing life-saving medical care to a population of 2.5 million people in Jammu and Kashmir. In fact, if you look at all of the new sensors that are available today, you can see that it is now possible to create a digital nervous system that provides the, the ability to track, tackle all sorts of problems we mentioned. With all these technologies, we can monitor and control our home in a smart way, actually making them smart homes. We can get assisted using all the health-related data gathered through sensors, sensors around us for healthier life, or the technology can be used at a larger scale for more public-oriented interest. For example, Metaport drones were originally developed to deliver uh, medications to inaccessible places in Bhutan and uh, New Guinea. Today, they are expanding their use commercial uh, shipping applications. So, the application of I IoT are endless, and huge op opportunities are there actually. Nowadays, people will want to use technology to streamline the, the existing systems and processes. How about research predicts that there will be 5x growth uh, starting last 2014 until year 2020. This will reach 1 trillion US dollar by 2020. As everyone is connected by some form or another, electronics, hardware, medical, and security, manufacturers uh, would work hand in hand together with service providers to provide a stable service even to the, to the average users. 
Samsung is committed to develop and expand IoT technology. As the global leader uh, in connected consumer electronics and semiconductor, Samsung has been uh, developing innovative products, especially connected and smart device, as you, as you can see on the slide. For that purpose, Samsung is investing $15 billion a year in research and development. Samsung commits to IoT technology and products, so already announced 100% digital appliances to be connected by 2020 or even earlier. Also, its commitment to open ecosystem. Okay, Taijin has been preparing two things to support I IoT. First, Taijin platform expands the reach their support. Currently, we can see in the market Taijin phone, Taijin TV, Taijin camera, and Taijin smartwatches. And also, we can see several home appliances with which take Taijin as their platform. Taijin is developing a lighter version of its, its profile so that it can support small devices and tiny devices for IoT world. Second, we are leading the global IoT standards and technology, which is OIC, Open Interconnect Consortium, to define the connectivity requirements and ensuring interoperability of the billions of devices that will, be, that will make up the emerging Internet of Things. I'm not going into the details uh, Taijin is preparing for IoT because we will have another big event for Taijin Developer Conference 2050 in Shenzhen, China. Under the slogan of Taijin, the best way to connect everything. This year, TDG, Taijin Developers Conference, will focus on the role of Taijin within the, within the Internet of Things and how Taijin can help developers maximize uh, the potential of IoT. In addition, to the, in addition to the latest Taijin technologies and devices, uh, I'm confident it will be a great opportunity to connect you with key Taijin leaders who create innovative devices that develop breakthrough business for global market. So, Taijin is here in India. What is next? You can find it at the Taijin Developer Conference in Shenzhen, China. Thank you, everybody.